Mathood Finance. Uh, they've become the best, uh, one of the best NBFCs. Uh, and uh, clearly almost vying for the top slot. They delivered a 25% year-to-date return in FY19. Microfinance uh, closes now on almost about 1,300 uh, crore plus securitization deals. So let's bring on board George Alexander, MD at Muthut Finance. George, hi, good morning. Brokerages are very bullish in Muthut Finance. Your company has now become the second NBFC um, and has delivered, or rather second best NBFC and has delivered a 25% year-to-date return. What, according to you, are the growth trends ahead going forward? And when is it that you overtake the likes of a Bajaj Finance? Josh, can you hear me? Okay, we'll connect with him again. Let's just tell you what's happening in the market. Uh, down half a percent. All sectorals, sectoral indexes, by the way, now are in the red. If I just look at the nifty texture, while well, Reliance is just about staying put, 1% higher. Unilever, irrespective of the impressive performance, have, uh, has given up its gains. There's ONGC holding up. There's Kotak Bank looking good. And yeah, Vedanta and Hindalco and even Wipro actually ahead of its numbers is holding up. Remember, there's all talk that there is going to be a bonus announcement as well in today's board meet. So that's keeping the stock uh, abreast. But I think George is back with us and just was wondering, George, uh, what according to you are the growth trends going forward for the industry and when is it that we have you surpass Bajaj Finance as the top NBFC? <laughs> That's a tall order, probably. Everybody, every company would like to uh, compete with the next in line. So that's a part. Uh, Muthut Finance is uh, doing well. The gold loan business has also started going up. And uh, many other concerns which were there is behind us, especially the funding, the ALM, all those things are behind us now. So we should see uh, uptick in the gold loans in the next uh, two, three months. So, so also the other verticals also. Right. How has been the performance in the gold loan segment and what is the outlook going ahead? See, the gold loan sec uh, sector for the last uh, last quarter has not been uh, good. Probably it is uh, flat flat growth in the last quarter. But uh, from December and uh, the latter half of December, uh, now we are seeing uptick in the gold uh, uh, loans. So we should see better results in this quarter. So as I was saying earlier, we should end the year with a 15-year AUM growth compared to the last year, year on year. 15 basis points. No, no, 15% growth in the AUM. Sorry. Right. How are your other businesses, home and microfinance, faring? Uh, what are the growth and AUM targets for both these businesses? See, the microfinance is uh, uh, doing okay because uh, it, does, it, does, it did not have any issues. But uh, as uh, for the housing, home finance, certainly home finance sector is having some uh, ALM issues. But uh, because this ours is... Uh, fully backed by Muthut Finance, it doesn't have a, a issue with that. But overall, the home finance sector, I don't think uh, everybody is growing aggressively. So we will also have only a uh, muted growth in the next quarter for home, life, home finance. Right. How do you see your revenue mix shaping up from here on? See, as of date, we have 10% uh, of uh, assets management other than gold loan. Uh, probably we should end the year with uh, maybe uh, 14 to 15 percent uh, with more than other than gold loans. So the revenue also should be uh, the same. Uh, but of course, uh, as far as gold loans is concerned, it gives a better revenue than both the others. But uh, uh, the other businesses are longer term. The housing finance is longer term. Gold loan is shorter term. But uh, the revenue also probably it should be almost the same or little more skewed to gold loan as uh, revenue uh, compared to the AUM. Right. Last time, you know, during our interaction, uh, you said you expect the borrowing cost to increase amid growing concerns. So how are, you, uh, how are your margins looking for Q3? See, as far as gold loans are concerned, we have seen a 100, base, 100 bips uh, rise in the uh, incremental borrowings from banks. But uh, uh, for gold loan sector, it is the customers are not that interest sensitive, unlike uh, housing finance, etc. So we have been able to pass on this to the customers. So in the last uh, three months, uh, we have raised our interest also 
by 100 bips. So uh, the margins, the net interest margins, we hope should remain stable or steady as we were having earlier. Right. So, you know, there have been growing concerns on the asset quality and the growth in the SME segment. What is your total exposure to this segment and what is the outlook going forward? Uh, is there something to be wary of? See, uh, gold loans, we don't go into the SMEs. Uh, it's for individual loans, the average ticket size is only 35,000 rupees. So for that, uh, there is no impact. If at all, there is, as you said, in the MSME sector. So that is not affecting our gold loan, which is 85 percent plus of our portfolio. The other is the housing finance and the microfinance. So we don't see any impact there also. So in NPS, etc., gold loan or whatever NPS we have today, we have about uh, less than two percent NP. That's also we have, it has never resulted in any loan losses for us, but it is just uh, we are giving more time to the customer to repay his gold loan. So till now, in the last several years, we have never uh, lost one rupee also to, uh, because of NPA in the gold loan. So NPA is not an issue for a gold loan. But of course, it can be an issue for the housing finance or for the microfinance. But uh, there, our uh, portfolio is around 10% plus or 10 to 12% of our total business only. Right. Finally, what is the outlook ahead on growth and asset quality? Uh, I know you've alluded to that, but you know, I particularly want to uh, understand your strategy with the general election approaching. The government has been pushing on populist measures. You think farm loan waivers are gaining popularity? Uh, and do you see that impact of such schemes coming to the company? In which light, uh, how would you look at your projections for growth? See, farm loan waivers, I don't know whether it is going to have any impact on gold loan customers because gold loan customers and farm loans, we don't do farm loans. So gold loan customers, it's not going to have. But uh, people having more money with them uh, in the, during the election time certainly should uh, uh, throw up uh, probably more consumer spending and uh, the economic growth also should grow if the elections are there and more money is coming into the hands of the public. So I, I don't think there is going to be any impact on that uh, elections with regard to gold loans or maybe not even the gold loan recovery also because we have the 100% collateral with us. George, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time out and chatting with us. Thank you. Thank you.